Uncharted, a series filled with action-packed sequences, heart-pounding escapes, breathtaking scenery, a bit of romance and absolute awesomeness. For over a decade, Uncharted has captivated us gamers with its cinematic storytelling and fantastic action. And it is the reason why it might be my favorite video game series out there. And the closest we will get to being Indiana Jones. At least, you know, until the Indiana Jones game comes out. For this reason, I wanted to go back to the series that I love so much and rank all of the games within it from worst to best. Now, I won't be ranking any of the expansions, nor will I rank the remasters or complete editions as separate games. I will only focus on the four main game releases. With that said, let's get started. I will start by saying that the Uncharted series is a series of great games. There are no okay or just good games in the franchise. They are all great, and compared to the other games in the same genre, these Uncharted games reign supreme. With that said, let's get into Uncharted Drake's Deception. For me personally, this is the weakest game in the franchise for a couple of reasons, and I think the biggest problem lies within the story. The story of this game delves deeper into Nathan Drake's history, giving us a bit of insight into his life and how he came to meet Sully, as well as how we got mixed up with the main villain of this game, Catherine Marlowe. Nate's quest in this game is to find the Atlantis of the Sands, before the big bad Catherine Marlowe gets to it, which is a pretty standard premise as far as the plot for these games go. Now as far as villains go, I don't think Catherine Marlowe is that bad. However, she is part of a secret organization that to me feels out of place for an uncharted game. Sure, their motivations and goals aren't exactly out of place for an uncharted game, but their design is just kind of stupid. These a-holes walk around in bloody suits, which just feels out of place, especially when comparing them to the other three games enemies. Also seeing a bunch of douchebags in suits walking around in some of these ancient sites just looks a little bit silly to me. However, my biggest issue is that the game tries to build up this adventure as just not being worth it because Nate going up against Marlo and a gang of suit wearing douchebags is somehow way more challenging than him going up against a psycho with a seemingly unlimited army of goons. At no point did Marlo's secret organization feel more dangerous or more of a challenge than what he has already faced in the previous two games. Furthermore, the story has issues with its plot armor and convenient coincidences. Nate survives quite a lot of things he probably shouldn't, and no, I'm not talking about the crazy over the top action scenes. For the most part those are fine and it's understandable why the game has these crazy action sequences within it. But Nate surviving for days in the desert without water or food and then randomly stumbling across an enemy camp in the desert and then somehow has the strength and energy to fight. It's all just a tad bit silly. And yes, these random convenient moments happen quite a lot, like how Elena randomly enters the building that conveniently is the correct building that the gang has to enter, or how Nate randomly washes up on a beach where he conveniently has to be. These convenient moments feel more like sloppy writing rather than anything else. When it comes to the gameplay, I feel like it might be the worst in the franchise as well. Again, I'm not saying the combat is bad, it's actually pretty good, and there are some improvements from the second game. There is much more emphasis on the hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the game shows just how much effort went into the hand-to-hand -hand combat system with the very cool bar fight sequence right at the beginning of the game, where you fight a bunch of British geezers. I also like how the game encourages hand-to-hand -hand combat by designing enemies that will hunt you down, especially when you stay too long behind cover, and they will come and start beating you up. Not only does this help keep pressure on the player, but it helps the combat stay fresh 
fresh and engaging. But there are also a bunch of new finishes to top it all off, like the one where Nate pulls the pin on a hand grenade and the enemy will explode. Sure, it's over the top, but still pretty darn cool. The game provides you with a variety of weapons as well, but I feel it's a little underwhelming when considering just how much the second game improved from the first game. Nonetheless, I think it's still an overall positive to the game's combat. The new ability to throw grenades back at the enemies was a really cool feature, and one that unfortunately got forgotten by the sequel of this game. More on that in just a bit. The big issue with this game's combat is that it just feels very unbalanced. Some levels are very easy to get through the combat encounters, while others have insane difficulty spikes. It feels like some of the enemy placement of these levels were not not very well thought through, and the result of that is that the game's combat feels a little bit sloppy. I also have to mention that the no aim mechanic caused me to shoot the cover I was hiding behind quite a few times, which wasn't really an issue in the previous two games. The sound design of the weapons kind of sound a little bit off to me. This might be a more personal complaint, but something about the weapon sound design just doesn't sound as good as the previous two games. Climbing in this game has seen some much needed improvement, which is a good thing because there is a whole lot of climbing in this game, maybe a little bit too much. That brings me to the levels, which to me are the most boring in the franchise, well at least the first few of them. The first half of this game to me is just a bit of a drag. Some of these levels go on way too long and are very poorly paced. It's only about till halfway through the game where the levels start to feel a little bit better. The game has some very cool puzzles and it actually seems like Naughty Dog went out of their way to try and create puzzles that look cool. However, there are some that take just a little bit too long and contribute to the pacing issues with this game levels. Now despite some of the issues with the levels, this game has some great action sequences. Much like the second game, it has an epic chase sequence where you will be jumping from vehicle to vehicle, oh yeah, and now there's horses. The airplane sequence is amazing as well, and it was so good that it made it into the terrible Uncharted movie, except it was way less epic in that. Now despite Drake's deception improving on some elements, the overall experience for me was wasn't as good as any of the other games in this franchise. Sure, it's still a great game, but in a series of other great games, it unfortunately is my pick for the weakest game in this franchise. Uncharted A Thief's End is the latest game in the franchise, and the first game to be directed by Neil Druckmann, instead of Amy Henning. From a narrative perspective, this game doesn't need to exist at all. Despite some of the narrative issues with Drake's deception, the ending neatly wrapped up the series pretty well. So yeah, this game didn't need to exist. That being said, this game's story still had its moments. Nate has a job as a salvage collector, and is happy married with Elena. However, he is longing for an adventure, but him and Elena promised they would leave that life behind. That is until Nate's long lost brother shows up from nowhere, looking for Nate's help to find Avery's treasure, to pay off a debt. However, this turns out to be a bunch of garbage, and the main villain of the story, Rafe, bailed him out to help him find Avery's treasure. I like the conflict between Nate and Elena, as Nate longs for his adventurous lifestyle and kind of struggles of the thought of giving it up, which nearly leads to him ending his relationship with Elena. Sam, despite showing up from nowhere, is still a compelling character to me. The game delves deep into Nate and Sam's younger years, and we get an insight into the two brothers' passion for ancient treasures and adventure. Sam is obsessed with finding Avery's treasure, and is so determined to get it that he lies to Nate, and, you know, contributes to the whole Nate nearly ending his relationship with Elena. After all, Sam is the reason Nate goes on this adventure in the first place. Sully Belly shows up in this game as he makes room for new characters like Sam, but when Sully shows up in these games, it's always great. The villains on the other hand are kind of boring. First up we have Rafe, who is a bona fide Nepo baby soy boy, who wants to find Avery's treasure to prove himself to uh, 
not be a Nepo baby or something. We also have Nadine, who is South African, and her only purpose in this game is to have an army of South African mercenaries, like a Carol's who like dinner. In all honesty, I don't really understand why Nadine is in this game. She beats up Drake twice in sequences that you cannot win, because Naughty Dog forgot how to design games, and at the end she just pieces the F out. Why on earth is she in this game? The combat in this game is great and certainly more polished and refined. There is yet again great attention to detail, especially when it comes to the enemies. You can now attack enemies from above and punch their lights out, and it works pretty well with your new grappling hook. There is a wide variety of new weapons, giving the player a bunch of options to choose from. Unfortunately, the ability to throw back grenades was removed for some unknown reason. Not sure why they removed it, because I think the game would have really benefited from that that feature. Now, originally I was going to place this game second, but I changed my mind, and that's down to the levels. I love the locations in this game, but the levels are very slow and boring sometimes. There is too much climbing and puzzle sections, and way too little combat sections, which is very unfortunate, because, well, I really like the combat in this game, and no, not even the grapple hook could save the climbing sections in this game. I do think that the climbing feels the best out of all the games, but this game could have used with way less of it. The game also has two flashback sequences, some similar to the ones in Drake's Deception, except way more boring. I generally hate these sections, and I would much rather have long cutscenes rather than walking around doing nothing. There are some levels that have wide open areas where there is more to explore, but in my opinion this just adds more climbing and walking around, which this game absolutely doesn't need. When it comes to the action sequences, they are pretty good in this game. Sure, they aren't really original and are basically just improvements from the sequences in previous games. An example would be the chase sequence in Madagascar, where the sequence starts off with Drake jumping out of his car, grappling onto a truck swinging past construction on a bridge, slowly crawling his way onto the truck, and then jumping from truck to jeep until he reaches Sam. I think this is the best take on the sequence in all of the games, and is yet another example as to why this game could have been so much better if it had more combat and action sequences. The puzzles are pretty well done, and some are very elaborate. This game doesn't have have cool looking puzzles like Drake's Deception does, but they are still pretty fun puzzles. I think this game's biggest issue lies in the fact that it has way too little action, and has way too much climbing, walking around and cutscenes. The combat is great, and needed way more combat sequences that could have made this game as good as the best in the franchise. Oh yeah, and the villains are pretty boring. Uncharted Drake's Fortune was our introduction to the Uncharted series, as well as the introduction of Nathan Drake, Sully and Elena. In this game, Nate and Sully are searching for the legendary treasure of El Dorado. Nate is searching for fortune while Sully is looking for enough cash to settle his debts, and well, those debts catch up to him in the events of this game. Elena is a journalist and ends up tagging along, trying to get some footage for her story. I think the story overall is pretty well rounded, and a fantastic one to set through. The character of Nathan Drake is very well established in this game. These games are highly inspired by Indiana Jones. Unlike Indy, Nathan isn't searching for treasure to preserve or to sell it to a museum, but rather for his own personal benefit, and this makes him distinctively different from Indy, which I think is a good thing. However, he's also willing to do the right thing, and this game shows that even though he's doing all of these crazy things to get some more quiche, it's still not more important to him than the people he cares for. I also have to give a shout out to Sully and Elena as well, as the game does a great job setting up their characters as well, and giving us some insight to Nathan and Sully's relationship, while establishing the romantic connection between Nathan and Elena. Furthermore, the game has some other great side characters like Eddie, who is Nate's former buddy, and again, the game does a great job at making it feel like these characters have a history. 
And of course, all of these characters are brought to life with some brilliant performances that stay consistent throughout the franchise. The gameplay overall is just a little bit clunky. This isn't really surprising considering the fact that this is the first game in the franchise. A lot of this clunkiness comes in the form of its climbing and platforming. A lot of the times it just didn't feel like Nate was controlling the way he was meant to, making the controls feel a little bit unresponsive and causing it to feel a bit clunky. The combat has a bit of a clunky feel as well. The aiming just doesn't really feel that responsive, giving it that clunky feeling. However, despite some of the clunkiness rooted in the combat system, the game also laid out the foundation of what was to come in the series. This is very evident in the enemies, as the enemies are very well designed and actually feel challenging to fight, and they actually look like they are trying to survive the shootout, instead of, you know, just kind of standing there and acting like a target, like the enemies in every modern Ubisoft game. The details in their movement is fantastic as well, the amount of animations that the enemies have is such great detail and shows Naughty Dog's dedication to the finer details. I think the one complaint I have regarding the enemies is that the variety is just not that great, which again, kind of expected given that this is the first game in the franchise and compared to the other games it's obviously a little bit disappointing. But still, it's not that this game doesn't have a great variety of enemies, it's just not that good compared to the others. The same can be said for the weapons, as, again, this game doesn't have as many weapons as the other games. But I do appreciate the fact that the weapons feel unique from one another, and the weapons you get early on in the game all feel practically useful right until the end of the game. And yet again, this factor stays consistent throughout the franchise. Now, similar to Dragon deception, this game has some sections where there are some major difficulty spikes. Unlike Drake's Deception, most of these difficulty spikes occur towards the end of the game, and not just randomly throughout it. The levels and action sequences this game has to offer are great. Yes, it's not as good as the other games, but again, it laid down the foundation of what was to come. I also feel like a lot of these levels are pretty well balanced out in terms of the ratio of combat encounters, exploring and puzzle solving. Visually, this game looks great. Again, this is something I can say about all of these games. And, well, yeah, all of these games look great for its time. I also like a lot of the locations you visit in this game, and the mercenary slash pirate enemies are way better than the suit wearing ales from Drake's Deception. I think the biggest issue with this game lies in the fact that it was the first game in the series, and therefore has some rough edges. And despite these rough edges, that still didn't stop it from being absolutely fantastic, and is why it's my second favorite game in the franchise. Uncharted 2 Among Thieves is not only the greatest game of this franchise, but one of the best games ever made, and one of the best, if not the best, video game sequel. In this game, Nate is going after the Chantamani Stone and Shambhala. The big bad in this game is an absolute unit called Zoran Lazarevich, who also just so happens to be searching for the Chantamani Stone. As far as villains go, he's pretty good. He's the over-the-top evil type that's pretty cliché, but I still think he works in this game's story. Teaming up with Nate is of course Sully, and Elena also makes a return. There is also the newcomer to the franchise, Chloe Fraser, who is best girl. In all seriousness, Chloe is one of my favorite characters in the Uncharted franchise, and I really like her seemingly unpredictable nature in this game. She's also working with Lazovic and helps Nate out with some insider information. Information. Nate also finds himself in a bit of a love triangle, caught up between Chloe and Elena. Even though I think love triangles can be a little cheesy, I think it's done well in this game. 
The story overall is my favorite in the franchise, and all the characters really shine in this one, with some great moments, great new characters and a pretty cool ending. Now the story is not the only element of this game, and luckily for us the gameplay is fantastic. There is a lot of improvement in the gameplay department. First off, the climbing is way better, even though still a little clunky in certain areas, it's noticeably better than in the first game. Combat feels much smoother. Aiming is now way less clunky and actually feels good. Sure, it's not as smooth as it is in Thieves End, but it's good enough, especially for its time. There's also more variety in weapons, with some new weapons that allows you to use a scope, which is a neat touch and a great option. I also like how you have a much wider variety of guns to choose from early on in the game which wasn't the case in the first game. You also have these explosive canisters that you can throw at the enemies, and then shoot it for a massive explosion, which is pretty cool. Speaking of enemies, the variety of enemies were improved as well. Just like all the other games, enemies are meticulously designed. The game also introduces new more challenging enemies, like the enemies with a riot shield, and it's up to you to come up with a creative way of taking them down as they make a great use of that shield. However, eventually when you take them down, you can then pick up and use the riot shield, because this is a great game. Now this game has an issue with the enemies in the final few levels. The guardians, which are the big blue enemies you find towards the end of the game, are quite a bit annoying. The big issue of them is the fact that they are bullet sponges, and therefore they aren't very fun to fight. The hand-to-hand -hand combat has also seen an improvement, the button layout has changed and now feels less button mashy and more deliberate. You now have a counter and dodge button, which makes the hand-to-hand -hand combat feel way better. The levels are fantastic as well. I will say that starting off in a train, dangling off a cliff is probably one of the coolest ways to start the game off. However, you then get thrown into one of the most boring missions in all of these games. The Turkish museum sequence is pointless. It's a very long and drawn out stealth mission in an uncharted game. Why on earth did they do this? Luckily for us, the game puts its foot on the gas from there on out. The chapters and levels following that up are all great. Once you reach Nepal, the game really kicks off. The game also gives us some of the most iconic sequences in the franchise, like the train sequence, the chase sequence where you jump from vehicle to vehicle, and some smaller sequences like when Nate gets pursued by a helicopter. The chase sequence where you jump from vehicle to vehicle was so iconic that it was in every game after this one. And well, the Uncharted 4 expansion even had a sequence that mixed together both the train and chase sequence. Basically, what I'm getting at is that the action sequences in this game were so good that later games in the franchise still use them, and only try to improve on them. The biggest compliment I can give to these levels is that it doesn't let up. There's so much combat and action sequences in this game, to the point where I have to ask what on earth happened in the fourth and third game. This game even solves the boring nature of climbing, by making you climb and fight at the same time. Why did these sequels ignore this? Don't know. Hell, there's even an escort mission they managed to make fun, where Nate is literally carrying a dude while shooting fools around him. All of these factors are why I love these levels so much. They action packed with some great combat and action sequences, while well, giving the player just the right amount of climbing and cutscenes to avoid them getting bored. The puzzles are great as well, giving the player puzzles that are simple, don't take much of their time, and yet are fun to solve. And when games make the puzzles like this, it's always a bonus for me. Despite its simplicity, a lot of the puzzles are massive in its scale and seems more elaborate than they actually are which probably adds to the satisfactory feeling when you complete them. Uncharted 2 Among Thieves is a perfectly paced game. It's action packed with some great sequences, great level design, fun puzzles, fantastic characters and a great story. And well, it's one of my favorite games. And well, with all that said, it's no surprise that Uncharted 2 is my pick for the best game in the Uncharted franchise.
Needless to say, but I think the Uncharted franchise is fantastic. I think it's one of the most consistent game franchises out there. Again, I have to reiterate that even though I have a lot of issues with some of these games, I still think they are all fantastic games. So yeah, this was my ranking of the Uncharted games from worst to best. I'm curious to see what you think about it and how you would rank these games. So leave a comment down below. And that is it for this video. I thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.